Okay, so 19. Um, I'm just going to get a pen to work. Okay, so let's look at 19. The uniform, um, well, actually, first, I'm just going to tell you, this one has to do with the parallel axis theorem. Okay, so that's like whenever you spin something around a different part of it that is not its like kind of natural axis of rotation, like its center of mass rotation, I guess you should say. So um, it would be the, so the total or whatever, just your rotational inertia for this particular situation is going to be the rotational inertia for the center of mass, which would be one of those six things you remembered, I mean, you've memorized, plus mass radius squared. Okay, so let's look at this. Uniform thin rod shown above has a mass of M and a length of L. That's what I kind of covered up there, length of L. Uh, the moment of inertia of the rod of the axis to the center perpendicular, like yeah, but spinning like that, okay, is something you should already know, which is a 1 12th in L squared. So we can go and plug that in. So that's your center of mass. So that would be 1 12th M L squared. Now, I want to write this a different way because that's a little bit misleading. Actually, it's okay. You could also look at this as 1 4th L, just to be clear. Either way, it's really, I guess, okay. Okay, plus mass. This is just the mass of your whole system, all right, times your L squared. I'm just going to, I'm running out of room, so I'm going to put it over 4. And then you would square that. So that would give you I equals, I'm going to just, well, I guess I'll go ahead and put, I lost my 1. I'll put that over 12, so I'll just go ahead and do ML over 12 plus m l squared over I'm going to square the l square the four over 16. well here's where i'm going to kind of like look over here for usefulness i don't really want to find my common denominator right there so i'm guessing it's 48 so i can probably narrow it down to these two it's like one o'clock sorry guys in the morning all right so uh let's see how do i get this to 48 so it would be four ml squared over 48 plus 16 i'm guessing three yeah that's right three okay this would be three times yeah that's 48 because it's like 30 plus 18 okay 48 okay there we go i equals 7 48 yuck ml squared so the answer to 19 is e Okay, so let's look at 20. Oh, uh, this is a calculus one. Okay, a certain one-dimensional conservative force, conservative, all right? So that means it's, you know, what do we know about conservative forces? They tend to be gravitational force or weight, right? Because they're gonna have potential energy associated with it, the ones we talked about, spring force, right? Or, well, we wouldn't talk about the electrostatic, you know, force because we're not in that. So it's going to be one of these two, or maybe both. Okay, it's given as a function of x by the expression of, hey, that looks a lot like Hooke's Law, where f is in newtons and x is in meters. A possible potential energy function of u for the force is... Okay, oh, well, it's kind of like spring force. Okay, so let's look at that. Energy. Now, how does energy relate to force? Okay, remember, work is a change in energy, potential energy even, right? And if we look at work, and you could look at your equation sheet if you want to see this, work is the integral of force dot dx, or they might put dr, who knows, ds, who knows what they put on your sheet, but you can say dx, you get it, change in position. All right, so, and they use x here, so I want to do that. So this is the power rule in reverse, kind of like what we did for that last one that was a calculus one. I forget what number it was. Um, anyway, so you do this function here. So this is like the k is kind of like your coefficient, the negative k. So if you remember, I'm going to go ahead and write this out to make it, for those of you who aren't in calculus, negative k. If you're in calculus, fast forward it. Okay, so instead of like multiplying this in front, what you're going to do first is you're going to add 1, 2, k, 
coefficient, so that's going to give you 4, so we know it's going to be something x to the 4th, and then you divide by that number. You're going to divide by 4, so it would be negative kx over 4, or I guess you could write that as negative 1 fourth, and that's going to be um, your, and the force here, this is going to be your potential energy. Um, your change in energy or whatever. So your potential energy would equal negative kx. So that would be negative one fourth to do, 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 do the fourth. That's an equal sign, not a negative, and that's kind of small. So the answer to 20 would be C. Is it C? Where is the negative? Oh man, I can't see that. Oh wait. You know what? It wouldn't be negative because this is just energy. So if you recall, energy is a scalar. It's a little bit different than positive and negative work. Energy is a scalar, so you cannot have a negative on that. So it's going to have to be this one. It's going to have to be D. And that, that's an equal sign. That's an equal sign. It's going to have to be D because you can't have almost made that mistake. Your force can be negative, but your energy cannot be. So the answer to 20 is D. All right, so let's look at 21. I'm all on time. This one's a little bit longer, but I think this one's going to be okay. All right, so which of the following is a differential equation that correctly describes Newton's second law for a simple harmonic oscillator of mass m and our storing force of constant k? Well, we know Newton's second law is mass times acceleration. All right, and then a restoring force. So restoring force, that's kind of like what I talked about up here. Restoring force is like your conservative force. Um, and hey, if it's not, it's either going to be gravitational or a spring, and guess which one has a constant, a K. So you're going to want something that's equivalent of MA equals negative KX. All right, well, let's look at these. I've got negative KX here and negative KX here. Oh, nope, that's not a negative kx, that's a kv, that one has to go away. This is kx, that's kx. It's going to be negative kx because Hooke's law states negative kx. And that's because if you hang a mass on a spring, mg, we did that earlier, is equal to fs, they're opposite directions. Anyway, that's not important. I guess we'll kind of, I don't know. But anyway, it's not going to be any of these and you need to find mass times acceleration. Hey, guess what? Acceleration is equal to dv dt, and dv dt is just the second derivative of position with respect to time. So yeah, it's b. Okay, sorry about the weird explanation on that. I should probably stop here.